morning, everybody. Happy Friday before February vacation. Um, the last time I checked in with you was actually the Monday at the beginning of this week. And I know I was giving you a little story time about my back. So I'll just give a quick little update because I don't want to talk about it too much. It has been a very stressful week. Um, basically, I was here for Monday for the half day. Tuesday, we had a snow day. It was canceled the night before and it was one of those um, where we actually got no snow. So I was still thrilled to have the day off because I laid in bed the entire day or on the floor actually um, in a lot of pain for my back. Wednesday, I woke up feeling a little bit better pain wise. And I can say now, knock on wood, my pain, the severe pain side of it is like way, way, way minimal. Um, that's gone way down. So I'm very thankful for that. I'm just mostly numb and tingly in my left leg. So yesterday I had a doctor's appointment and long story short is they do believe, I already said this, that I have a slipped disc. Um, they don't want to give an MRI cause I'm still young enough where even if they get, did give an MRI, they say it's most likely will lead to surgery and they don't think I need surgery yet. We'll start with PT and cortisone shots. Um, so that's what I have in my future. I feel very old. I feel very stressed out. I know, and like as a teacher to another teacher, I would 100% always tell them, you know, take the time you need. You have to worry about yourself first. But to have to miss a day and a half the week before February vacation on already a four-day week, so stressful. I hate, I hate having to miss school. I hate having to worry about the sub plans and everything else. But I know I have to take care of myself first. But even though I can say that, if you probably understand, it still, it doesn't feel good. So anyway, we are here. It is Friday. We are getting through the day and I've got some fun stuff to talk about. I figured in today's video, I would go over some of the ways I like to spiral review um, a lot of those fluency facts. I think I told you in last week's video, we are working on time and calendar. We're actually finishing that up. Um, but even when we're learning about these other concepts like geometry and measurement and place value, um, I still always want to be reviewing those addition and subtraction facts within 20 and helping my students become more fluent with that. So there's a few different ways I like to do that sprinkled in throughout the week um, and some daily activities that I thought I would share today. So let me pull up my slides. I wanna show you the first thing we do. So before I show you the slides, I wanna let you know the first thing I really like to implement is once a week, I like to have a rotation day where we are basically doing um, like three different rotated centers where I get to meet with each and every student during the math block. Something I've been struggling with a lot this year is our math block is right in between lunch and specials. And I think it's about 55 minutes total, but with the transition time, adding calendar in, it really feels a lot shorter than it has at any other school I've worked at before. And I feel like I don't get all the opportunities to walk through each part of a lesson that I like to. So I always start my lesson with, you know, a math warm up, some explicit teaching. I like to go into partner practice and then independent practice. And I find that I either don't have time for the partner practice or for the independent practice. And that is when I'm usually checking in with students. So to kind of combat this, what I've done is, like I said, once a week, I will try to do a rotation day. So let me show you what it looks like on the slides. First for math, like I said, we always start with our digital calendar. It is just the easiest way to transition my students into being ready to learn. They come in from the door, plop right on their rug spot, and this only takes about, you know, five minutes total. There's about four slides, we do the Pledge of Allegiance, and then we move on. It's just a nice, easy way to get them settled. Now, for this rotation day, we like to start with some sort of either Usually we're doing a math talk, but for this day, I said, let's review telling time to the hour and half hour. And we did this with quiz, quiz, trade. I'm gonna go into this game a little bit more in a minute, um, but I think I've shared it before. So let's just skip that for now. I'll come back to that later. And then my math rotations look like this. I like to do three different stations and I put an eight minute timer up at the top there um, just to keep us on track and allow for transition time in between each one. So my three stations are almost always the same where my station number one is going to be either task cards or some sort of practice with those addition and subtraction fluency facts. So my students are either going to be doing some sort of fluency game, some sort of hands-on game, something to help them with those facts. Next we have IXL. I always use that as an independent station. And then my last one is teacher table. Now I have um, a bunch of students here right now. I am lucky enough right now to be working with an aide and I have a math interventionist who comes in during my math block. Um, so I have two kind of groups that get to work with a teacher at this time. 
but I've done this before throughout the rest of the year where it's just me. So they would be more split up evenly. And then at the teacher table, I am usually working with that group on the skill that I am teaching. So if right now we are working on time to the hour or half hour, I am doing that with them so I can check in and make sure that they are able to access that. I can differentiate as needed. I can push them as needed. Um, so I do split up these groups. Obviously you can't see their names, but I split them up based on um, what they're working on. So that way it can be homogeneous groups. And then obviously we start the timer, it has a nice little calming noise. If this one's actually too loud, I would turn it down. And then we go slide to slide and it's gonna be the same thing, the names just rotate. So three eight minute stations. It is not a lot of time, but it is actually, it works out really well. Um, it's enough time for me to be able to see what students are able to do. Now, obviously one of the most important parts about these rotations is that students need to be independent at them. So I am able to actually check in since eight minutes is not a long time. And that is where IXL comes in. I am so happy to be partnering again with IXL in today's video. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know how much I love to use them on a daily and weekly basis. And one of my favorite parts about IXL is that it truly is no prep for teachers. I know that when I go into the dashboard, I can find ready-made skills plans set for my students based on exactly what we are learning, which is what I did for this week's rotations. Let me show you. So here we have the IXL dashboard where you can see how many skills we've been working on, time spent, how many hours our students have been working. And when you go down, you can always see the skills that I have starred. And these are the ones that I have students working on this week. So these are the suggested skills. So when students open it up on their iPads, they can see that their teacher wants them to work on these. So this week I have students working really on telling time to the hour and half hour. So first we have reading clocks and writing times. What time does the clock show? We have matching analog and digital clocks. So they'll look at the digital clock first and then find the matching analog time. And then this one is very similar, which clock shows 1030. They have two different ones to look at and they have to click the correct answer. Now I'm gonna go into one of these, but I wanted to show you one of my favorite features about IXL. If you go up to learning and then go over to the skills plans, you can actually click textbooks and it'll help you find your actual curriculum. So we are using math and focus. And if I go to first grade, what it does is it takes all the IXL skills for first grade and it separates them by chapter in the book. And it goes even further to separate them by lesson within the chapter. So here is chapter one, chapter two. You can see all the different ways to add, making addition stories. So they have taken all that work and done this for you. Let's jump ahead to chapter seven, which is calendar and time. Now I haven't done any yet for calendar and then for time to the hour, we kind of jumped quickly from learning time to the hour to half hour. So I just had my students practice these ones, but let's go into one of them so we can see what it looks like. So first I love that we have the audio component. As you know, if you teach first grade and you want this to be independent, some of your students might not be able to read so they can click this button. Look at the analog clock. And so they know to look at this time and then they have to do this. Which digital clock shows the same time? Perfect. And then they'll click the correct time and press submit. Now, if students don't know what to do or if they still need a little bit more reteaching, they can go up to this learn with an example. And here again, it has the audio so they can understand what to do. If they scroll down, it also shows some key ideas about analog and digital clocks. And then it shows them how to get the solution. So it even walks them through every step to read the analog clock. First, find the hour hand and it points that out. So it shows that it is at the six and the minute hand is at the 12 to show six o'clock. And you can really see just how much detail it goes into. So this is great for your students that are not only reviewing this skill, but might need a little more practice with it. If you want to try out IXL with your students, they're actually offering a 30-day free trial for teachers or an exclusive 20% off for parents during the first month or year that you sign up. Whether you are a teacher or a parent, you can take advantage of IXL's core subjects like math, science, language, arts, just using the link in my description. Go ahead and check it out. So also to help foster that independence during that other group, we have teacher table, we have IXL, and then I have the kind of hands-on group where we are practicing you know, something students already know. Of course, in this group, since they are going to be by themselves, not with a teacher, I wanna make sure they know how to do the activity. 
Um, so this is where something like my task cards come in. These are something that I have taught students how to do before. We have practiced them before. Like this one, for example, is the true and false with tens frames. And not only do students know how to do this one, but they've also done this one with addition as well. So they know they have to draw the number in there, circle if it is true or false. When they are doing this section, I do like to pair them up with the partner. I have taught my students when they are doing games or when they are doing task cards like this, they need to kind of coach one another. We've talked a lot about what that looks like and helping one another out. So this is just an example of something they would know how to do. So this week, this was their uh, third rotation. Now with only eight minutes, students got to just come over and pick which one they wanted to do. Um, if there was one that I really wanted a student to do, I would make sure that I put their name on it and I would say, hey, you guys start with this one where they have to draw the cookies or um, add a manipulative here and then take them away. Um, and then if they finish this one, they can come grab another one. But for most students, I let them actually pick. Now, sometimes that task card rotation would also be something like a print and play partner game. Um, I have a million of them for all different math skills that my students love to play. Again, those games are something that my students are familiar with. They know how to play them and the skill just kind of keeps changing each time. And again, just to make clear, they are almost always working on the skill we are currently teaching back at the teacher table with me. Like I said, it really lets me kind of check in with them to make sure they understand what we are working on. So in one of the stations, they're reviewing those addition and subtraction facts. Um, on IXL, they are doing independent practice. And I often like to star not only skills that we are working on currently, but then also they have some other ones with that fact fluency. So if they finish, you know, telling time skills, they can work on those other ones too. And then they come meet with me. All right, so that is what I like to do weekly, but there's also some things I like to do on a more daily basis to really help students with that fluency and help them just review different skills throughout the year. So the first one, I mentioned it at the beginning of um, the slides there, is a game called Quiz Quiz Trade, or actually that one was Mix and Match, but you kind of play them in a similar way with similar materials, so let me show you how that works. Now, I know I have mentioned these before, but I just like to make a little grid over on Google Slides that's like a nine by nine grid, and I just plug in different skills um, for my students to work on. So this one is mix and match. And while this isn't addition fluency and subtraction fluency, because we were practicing time, you can see how this game would work in a similar way. So for mix and match, all you have to do is create little cards that match up. So here we're doing time to the hour and half hour. And I want my students to match 930, uh, the digital clock to the analog clocks. So again, if you were doing this with addition or subtraction, you might have 10 minus four and six. Um, or six plus six, 12, whatever skill you wanna work on. Uh, and all you do is you will cut these out. You'll give one to each student. They will mix all around the room. I tell my students when they get their card, they have to look at it. They have to know what time it says and they have to hide it right away. So I don't want them uh, trying to find their partner yet. And then they stand up, walk around the room. And when I say go, they will mix around the room and try to find their match as quickly as they can. Once they do find their match or they think they find their match, they quickly come over to the rug here. Um, that way everybody else that's still mixing and looking is kind of mixing around the room um, and they know that they still need a partner and they will high five their partner, stand over here. And when we're all done, they will show their cards and the whole class will have to give them a thumbs up um, as they go through each pair and just say if it is correct or incorrect. So that one is called Mix and Match. The other game is Quiz Quiz Trade. These are both Kagan structures, and I swear I know I've mentioned them before, so I apologize if I am repeating myself, but these are truly skills and activities we use all the time, and they get students up and moving, so I love it. The other one is Quiz Quiz Trade. So for this one, I wouldn't have a match. For this one, I would probably use analog clocks, and students would just simply each have an analog clock. They would mix around the room, find a partner, and when they do, they would show the partner their card, and they would have to say, what time is this? And the partner would say, four o'clock. Now, often I would have four o'clock written on the back here. That way the person can check it um, and make sure everybody knows. And then the other person who I matched with would have their own card. I would have to say what time that one is, quiz, quiz, and then we trade cards. So we would trade cards, I would turn around and go find a new partner around the room. So we only do this for about three to five minutes, but again, it gets students up, it gets them walking, it gets them mixing with other partners and quizzing each other on the skills. Now again, if you don't want to do it with time and we're talking about that addition and subtraction fluency, put a bunch of little facts on here. Three plus three, seven plus seven, doubles facts if you want, near doubles, whatever you're working on. And they can again, quiz, quiz, and trade. Now, I know these are just like simple flashcards. Like I said, I make them on Google Slides and I just plug them in each week. But if you do think it would be helpful for me to make a bunch of these already made for different skills, that way you could just print them out and go. Let me know down in the comments. That's probably something I can easily do. 
um, and either put in the clubs or put up on TPT or something, but let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Now, sometimes I like to just start our math block with some sort of quick review game. Um, I shared one a few weeks ago and it had um, like two, four, six, eight, and we covered it with cards. Um, I'll link that video right here in case you wanna check that out, but that was a fun one. Here is another one for this one's addition facts within 10, just to quickly be able to identify them. Now, a big part about these fluency games is I really like to include the concrete with the abstract. So I don't, always just have my students, you know, eight plus one, nine, five plus zero, five. I like to have them actually show it on something like a wreck and wreck or something with cubes um, and really just try to, again, build that fluency with both the concrete and the abstract. So for this game, all students would need are some little counters here um, and they would play bingo. And so here they could pick any little number. They have to try to get either a row down, a row across or diagonally. And to fill the block, they just have to say five plus three equals eight, and they have to show it on here. So I would say five plus three equals eight. So they show it and they can cover it. And then the next person would go with their wreck and wreck. And I got these, these are just a class set I had purchased at the beginning of the year um, for my students. Um, I don't remember how much it was. It wasn't that cheap, but I think I got it on sale. Um, but these have come in very handy for things like this. Just again, be able to show the concrete for each one. So one plus zero, they quickly just show it and cover it. And then you can make a bunch of these grids for any skills that you want. Again, addition, subtraction, uh, going up to 20 within 10, whatever you're looking for. I also recently created a bunch of these math fact fluency mats. Um, this one is just plus one, but we have, you know, plus zero, plus 10, uh, double it. We have all sorts of ones. And this one, you just need a spinner and students will again spin. They got two plus one. And again, if I wanted them to show it here, I would make them show the two, add on another one. Uh, to show three, and then they would go ahead and cover up the three. And for this, we would just do, I'd probably have them use two different color cubes, um, and they would continue to go until all of them are filled up or until the time is over and see who covered the most. Um, I think these should be in my TPT store or the SGT Math Club by now. If they are, I will link it down below. But like I said, we have plus one, minus one, plus zero, plus two, all sorts of different quick skills. And again, they just go with the partner and play for about five minutes. This is the game I was talking about earlier with the two, four, six, eight. Um, I think I showed you this before, but remember they just count two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and then they cover it with a little index card. Um, they'll cover one number while the other student has to then figure out what number was covered and still count forward and backwards. And I had mentioned too that you can do this with multiples of any number, but another number sense fluency type game we can start your math block with. So yeah, those are some of my favorite ways to help students review and spiral some of the skills that they have already learned. First and foremost, about once a week, I like to do those rotations so I can check in with students and have them practicing the skills they've already been taught. And then I also like to kind of kick off each day. Now, I didn't mention a number talk. I've said this in every video. I almost always start with a number talk, which is one of my favorite ways to go ahead and review those old skills and talk about being flexible with numbers. I have math talks for the entire year right here. Um, instead, in this video, I focused on some of the other games we like to play, like Quiz Quiz Trade, Mix and Match, any of those little fact fluency games, and it really only takes a few minutes at the start of each lesson. I hope you found some good ideas in this video. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.